So this is a problem foot. Um, as you can see, there is a considerable hole in here. Um, this is the beginnings of toe necrosis. There are many ways to deal with this. Um, if it's beyond salvation, the leg, then we quite rightly put the animal down on humane grounds. Um, in this case, it wasn't on that level. Um, if there are, there, there are a couple of options we can explore. What I would like to demonstrate today is claw amputation. Very important thing to point out, very important thing. In the UK, to carry this out, you, are, you have to be a vet. If you carry this out, I don't know anyone who would have carried this out in the UK and not being a vet. You are absolutely, you would be absolutely be breaking the law. Before we proceed with the anaesthetic, I'd like to give it a good clean and a good wash. So, um, there's a pair of clippers I prepared earlier. So we give it a nice trim, very nice trim, all the hair. At this stage, restraint is very important. Uh, obviously, we need to worry about the cow not kicking us. At uh, this stage, she's not in pain in any way, other than what the foot is bearing. We don't need to clip all the way up to here, but the more we clip, the better. I tend to like that. So we've um, clipped it nicely. There's not much hair left. We will wash it and disinfect it. Iodine is a great substance um, to clean tissue and also we finish off with some surgical spirits. Uh, that's optional um, on, on top of that just to sort of um, combine um, a broad spectrum disin disinfection protocol. Um, we are now going to um, do a tourniquet and we're going to restrict the blood flow, the return blood flow on this leg to allow us for the local anaesthetic to work. I can't emphasize enough that the next step onward, it's only a vet can carry out. We're inserting, we're entering a cavity, the vein, and a vets are obviously in the UK, the people who are quite rightly trained to carry out such a procedure. So let's grab the tourniquet. Many types of tourniquet, I quite like this one. It's been used a couple of times. It's been cleaned a couple of times. So it's, it's adjustable. So what I will do here is um, I need to place it somewhere there at that level. I will release this. Um, in, in case of a real cow, obviously we need to worry about not getting kicked. The configuration in case of a real cow would be different. Um, it's quite important to be as tight as possible to allow us to raise those veins to, to stop that return blood flow. There are two locations we're interested in, either this or down there. On the other ones, as we will discuss in a second, the actual location um, is, is slightly different again. So um, what we're doing is searching for that uh, return. We call it ballotment. Um, I can feel some sort of fluid here, so I'll go in just like that. And if I'm in, you can see blood coming out. If there is blood coming out, you've already prepared some of this, not advertising the product. If you're a vet, you know exactly what this does. Um, I'm looking at 20 to 30 mils. Um, attach this, inject them slowly. If the tourniquet stays on, the local anesthetic will also stay on here and will provide us for approximately an hour and a quarter worth of duration of superb regional anesthesia and it works really well um, and our next thing is to check that this animal the the anesthesia has worked so let's check that take the needle we used before and let's see if if it has worked if we tap it here it won't flinch let's see i'm pretty sure the anesthetic has worked in her case particularly in the abaxial area the lateral area they are very sensitive areas of the foot so, pretty good. I'm happy to proceed. Um, I will use a cheese wire.
to do this. Um, it's not a job I look forward to. I see myself as a relatively fit person, but this needs explosive energy and you've got to be quick um, because not only you're cutting, you're causing hemostasis whenever possible. So it's always easier to attach, to engage the cheese wire in this region by cutting the skin first. And I'll show the areas that we tend to cut. The second decision or the primary decision we need to make is do we amputate the, uh, the bone or do we disarticulate? I tend to shy away from disarticulation because that invariably leaves cartilage on, even if we go afterward and scrape the cartilage off, uh, it leaves some cartilage on. It also leaves some of the um, articular fluid. The cartilage and the fluid are brilliant environment, uh, nutritious for bugs that they will find their way in, in, in this area of interest. So, um, incising. We're cutting through the skin and creating a good area for the cheese wire to engage. So this is now nicely cut. And we go here. And we're going to go on in, in the front. Obviously, in the real thing, we would have a lot of blood coming out. With regional anesthesia, you tend to get more bleeding. So, let's see. That's incised, that's incised, that's incised, that's incised. And we want to go back here. And back there. And we're good to go. So, what I have done is I prepared earlier. There's my two handles um, that uh, I have tied the cheese wire around. And there's the other handle. They've got brown handles for some reason. Anyway, and then I've attached a good sort of length. The worst thing you can do is have a sort of quite narrow, tight cheese wire because all you have to work on is this. You want to sort of utilize that. Now, what follows next, um, I don't tend to look forward to. The cow is in a good place. The cow is anesthetized, is disinfected, is ready for that to happen. Ideally, I would like, don't want to go at right angles with a foot. I might miss the uh, relevant structures. Um, the angle has to be there, so we'll get something between the P1 and the P2. Okay, the phalanx, the first or the second phalanx. Hold it, hold it, hold it, here we go. Thank you. Right. Well, that's good exercise, but it's the sort of exercise I could do without. So we got, that's the front of the foot. As you can see, uh, the sole, you can see all these grooves and the lines through which it's been growing through. Uh, there's a massive hole here. This will end up as toe necrosis, which is quite bad. It's unlikely there will be any return from. So what we're looking at is the stump that is the the p2 the middle phalanx so in essence that's where the horn is that's where we cut through and we have left a bit of that in there so um, we can see various structures we can see the deep flexor tendon that pulls the claw back when the cow starts to walk that's a massive powerful tendon attached to the uh, gluteal muscles, um, the, the gastrocnemius to be more precise. Um, and we can see all sorts of other tissues, the skin obviously here, this bit is the fat and uh, other connective tissue. So good work, nice and clean. Let's have a look on what's left here. So if we said this is the deep flexor tendon, this attaches to that bit that's already pulled, pulled in. Um, We've got the remnants of the bone. That's the remains of the P2. Um, there's a tendon, a lot of fat and flaps of skin. Now, post-operatively, 
we need to make some considerations on how to um, deal with this. Obviously this flap of skin eventually will dry off and come off on its own, but I'll cut it off. I pay extra care when I use the knife. I want that off with a knife or a pair of scissors. I want all the fat off. The fat is a fantastic substance for bugs to grow. So the less fat I have, I can't remove all the fat. A lot of it ends up as the um, fat pad. So nice quality fat. All this comes off. Nice, and now we're ready to dress it. Ideally, um, except the vet wrap that goes around it, ideally we want um, an absorbent pad to stay there for at least two days, if not four, depending on the case. The first dressing, I recommend to delay it as long as you can to allow the new healing tissue to, um, the new connective tissue to sort of grow over. But once we put the pad on, there's not much more to it to do. Uh, we bandage it any best way we can. We avoid weight-bearing surfaces after we trim this claw, for instance. And then we go in that fashion, and then here, and then there, as tight as we can. Not too tight because we don't want to strangle, strangulate the tissues. The idea is to keep a close eye on it. If the bandage is too restrictive, you'll notice swelling above it. So someone from the farm staff that's been clearly instructed by the vet or the vet themselves comes out and re-bandages it. But all things equal, we want the animal to slowly start recovering and putting weight on that claw um, and the bandage ideally stays on for two to four days uninterrupted and then every 48 hour changes of bandage following that. Post-operatively, um, analgesia, very important, three to five day course or longer if the animal needs it. If there's any infection, of course, um, we will have to use antibiotics, but that is something we'll take a view on. Invariably, most of the environments that these animals end up in are challenged with high bacterial um, load. In that case, it's difficult uh, not to give any because we've already introduced, no matter how clean we were in these commercial conditions, we are likely to have introduced some infection, some um, uh, bacterial uh, load, and possibly that could lead to, to an infection. Um, that's really pretty much it uh, to the claw amputation. Again, if you're not a vet, I, I sound like a broken record, in the UK and other countries, if you're not a vet, you cannot um, carry this out. So, uh, thank you.